This is perhaps the most Joe Biden thing I've ever seen. Joe Biden has been a senator, a vice president, and now a president himself. There's been a lot of change in his political career over the years, but the one constant is that Joe Biden really, really loves ice cream. He talks about it literally all the time. No matter what's going on, no matter if he's a senator or a sitting president, no matter what crisis is sitting on his plate, just get that man a cone. Mm, yeah, he loves ice cream because he never has to worry about brain freeze. <laughs> Everything else. Yes. All right. I'm beginning to think a lot of people don't like white people. <laughs> and ironically, a lot of them are white people, too. Just ask Lockheed Martin, the nation's largest defense contractor. Last year, they sent their white male executives to diversity training camp. The purpose? To break down their white male privilege. And here I thought that was the view's job. In the City Journal, Chris Rufo explains how white employees are forced to atone for their putrid, pale pigment. These workers include retired Air Force colonels, generals, and also the dudes who run the $1.7 trillion F-35 fighter jet program. But they're Caucasian men, making them as white and useless as a really bad lacrosse player. Because, you know, they're white. <laughs> There, the employees were asked to list connotations for white men. What was listed? Can you guess? Racist, angry, old, anti-women, Aryan nation, KKK, guns. Basically how CNN described Trump voters. <laughs> the conclusion, white men don't care about diversity and refuse to give up their power, so we need to cure them. These guys were then forced to embrace an inclusion philosophy that only includes them if they admit that they're the problem. Sounds like Kat's marriage counselor. <laughs> but apparently, they have it so good that they're the only ones you can be racist to. The resources behind this seminar, can't believe they use that word, are all about uncovering roots of white male culture and heterosexual, heterosexual privilege. They point out that positive traits like hard work and principles are devastating to women and minorities. If I were a woman or a minority, I'd feel insulted. I wonder if you identify as one, would that get you out of this stupid seminar? <laughs> so we live in a world where expecting hard work for minorities is racist, and telling white people they're intrinsically evil isn't. Employees then must rebuild their identities as agents of change by reading over 100 white privilege statements where they confess their acts of bigotry. One example, quote, I can commit acts of terrorism. Yeah, that's exactly what I look for in a weapons maker. <laughs> if it sounds like a cult indoctrination, that's because it is a cult indoctrination. All that's missing are the extra wives. Actually, calling it a cult is a smear against cults. This is basically a cult without the fun stuff. You get the humiliation, but none of the drug-fueled orgies. I wonder if CNN is bothering to cover this, or is it too close to their own left-wing brainwash? Let's see what's on that network right now. I hate I white hate people. You I so hate much myself. Because you're white, the sight of my white skin makes me vomit. I'm a, I'm a monster. <laughs> Ooh, a lot of energy there. Yes. These evil white men had to read statements from fictitious minorities and women that explain how bad white men have been to them. One of them was, quote, I'm tired of hearing of the concept that we should be colorblind. Sounds like someone hates Martin Luther King Jr., too. They have more in common with George Wallace than George Floyd. So the whole point of an integrated society is now irritating to our modern race warriors. Maybe because if everything isn't racist, they're out of a job. I wonder what our angry white male thinks. <laughs> yeah, critical race theory. Seems to have seeped into every part of our society by now, except one, the inside of my head. <laughs> Something wrong with him. So why would Lockheed Martin greenlight this idiocy? Well, what do they make? 
baskets and flutes, okay. cute hats for bunnies. No, it's air and missile defense systems, fighter jets. Essentially, they sell things that kill people and not just white people, brown ones yeah. too. And they make billions off it. You can go on Investopedia and check out their products, but you'll also find just as important their commitment to diversity, inclusiveness, and social responsibilities. Those are their words. Meaning what? They'll kill people of any color? <laughs> no, it means that the missile destroying a village was brought to you by a non-binary person of color with a degree in gender <laughs> studies. You see what's going on, right? Corporations have finally figured out a way to defang the hard left. The anti-war crowd can easily be appeased if you just go woke and play the I'm the worst race ever card. It's the best distraction since texting while driving. A pacifist might be disgusted by Lockheed, but what if that fighter jet has a rainbow bumper sticker on its fuselage? <laughs> and guess what? The cockpit is now called a non-binary inclusion space in which the <laughs> aviators drop projectiles on citizens from above. Non-binary citizens. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to figure out who's behind woke culture. I thought there was no head on this snake, but I think I'm wrong. It's the corporations. They finally figured out how to placate the left, and that's to throw their white employees under the M1 Abrams tank. On one hand, Jeff Bezos is supporting Black Lives Matter. In the other hand, is the steering wheel of his 500-foot yacht. Does it make for better products? No. Does it improve race relations? Not by a long shot. But it does put a lot of money in the pockets of diversity coordinators and other grifters and a smile on the face of filthy rich executives. Like a bomb, it makes for a hell of a racket in more ways than one. Yeah. Welcome tonight's guest. She's the only vegan we're afraid will bite us. Fox Business Network anchor, Dagan McDowell. He's the only Dallas Cowboy who married a dude, as far as we know anyway. Former NFL linebacker, Jeff Rohr. If he looks familiar to you, he probably was the dunk tank operator at your favorite carnival. Fox News radio host, Jimmy Failure. She's very bold. Her hair is gold, and every day she gets more old. Fox News contributor, Cat Tim. You know, Jeff, I was trying to find a funny way to introduce you, and I couldn't think of anything funnier than you being an NFL linebacker for Dallas Cowboys, who then married a guy who looks like Liberace. Uh, <laughs> it's true, I did. I married Liberace. Uh, you did. You just did. a younger version of Liberace, but uh, it's an interesting thing to actually be an NFL player, an ex-NFL player, and be married to somebody like Liberace. It kind of <laughs> opens a lot of new doors. It really does. So with this stuff, this woke stuff, this critical race theory, how would it... How would it have been uh, encounter? How would it have been greeted by the Cowboys back in the 1980s if you can, if you were sober back then and could remember what it was like? Mm -hmm. It it would not have worked, especially <laughs> on that team. I would have been <laughs> off that team. They would have never drafted me in the first place. <laughs> um, but when I did get there, we had a hell of a lot of fun, Greg. Yes. Yeah, a lot of orgies, a lot of extra, <laughs> all that stuff. I mean, the NFL was out of control back then. Yes, it was. So this, if the, the, has it changed? I mean, this stuff, this stuff. Can it work in sports, or is it impossible with that mindset? I think it could work in sports, but I don't think sports wants it to work in sports, especially yeah. pro football. You know, baseball is super macho, too. Basketball, definitely no. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a very long time until there's out players in the, <laughs> in the NFL, NBA, or the MLB, maybe pro soccer. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Dagan, how do you think this training w actually makes white men feel? <laughs> I hope it makes all men. I think that you should have training for all dudes. I hope it makes them feel awful. They need to be, they need to be indoctrinated into what it feels like to be a girl. Yeah. Like simulated monthly cramps with a cattle prod <laughs> repeatedly poked at your crotular region. I, li I priced out cattle pods, uh, prods on Amazon. A four, out of half, four and a half out of five star rating on Amazon. A cattle prod is only $63.98. So you could make that financially feasible for a corporation. <laughs> or teach men what it feels like to wear high heels. Just pound their tiny little toes with a rubber mallet. Yeah. Or, just tell, or just tell them, smile, honey. Yeah, yeah. Why are you smiling? Oh, did your latest husband leave you? You really <laughs> need to turn that frown around. So I, I'm all for uh, male training. Mm -hmm. But not this kind of male training, that kind of male this training. This kind of male training. Exactly. <laughs>
I think that's called marriage. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's what turned him gay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was married to a woman. Yeah. That, and, yes. Yeah. yeah, that happened to me uh, several times. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, it looks like you actually mugged Liber Archie's uh, wardrobe <laughs> closet with that jacket. Uh -huh. um, isn't this kind of, it, it, it does feel like a cult. Yes. This is the thing. And by the way, to the, to the point of your intro, I did work a dunk tank, by the way. I, I bet did. you did. Yeah, I so have a dunk tank vibe. Even though now I'm dressed like a stripper who got fat during the lockdown. <laughs> yes. and I can't get any work. Well, God fell to book me. Yes. Uh, and thank you. <laughs> Barely. Uh, th thank you. Uh, yes. Point taken. Um, this is very much a thinly disguised way of going to the dominatrix. It's the mm -hmm. same experience. You right. get called names. You have to apologize for existing. The only thing they're not doing is like putting a cigarette out on their tongue. Right. It's the same thing. In the past, these corporate CEOs would get in big trouble because they'd have these eyes wide shut parties mm -hmm. where everybody would get debauched and drunk and naked and demeaned and abused. Now they just get called racist for an hour and a half. <laughs> but the real problem in this country is we don't have a white on black problem in this country. It is a white on white problem. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem in this country is half of the white people in this country are heeding the words of Martin Luther King, judge you by the content of your character, not the color of your skin. The other half is telling the black community you're under attack. Everybody hates you. We're out to get you. And none of it's true. Black people, we love you. If you don't believe me, look at this fashion. What other white guy is wearing this idiotic outfit? It's swag because we love you. So. I don't understand the correlation between your jacket and that, but I, I get your passion and I understand it. All right, Kat, this is really... Now, he says it's more like masochism. I think it's a distraction away. So companies have figured out a way to make people who hate corporations happy. Yeah, especially if you make weapons. Yeah. <laughs> I love that you pointed that because it's crazy. Like there can be no such thing as a woke progressive weapons maker. I mean, it's beyond parody. Like, don't worry, all of our bombs were made by people of color. Like, they're <laughs> bombs. You're making weapons to destroy and kill. There's no kumbaya about that whatsoever. But, it, it's a very bold marketing strategy on their part, but there's no such thing as woke what like it's just progressive that we have well, the diverse people made the but, things that kill the people. What are you talking about? Well, think about the empowering message, though, that people are going to be blown into millions of pieces knowing they did so in the name of progress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're a dust cloud. Progress. G guys make bombs. Guys make purses. Some guys are better at making bombs. Some guys are better at making purses. <laughs> Let them do what they're good at. There's a lot of guys in this, yeah, not yeah. any women. That's my huge issue. Well, okay, oh, you, are, you are our kind of like our business expert here. Will companies actually push back? And to push back, you have to like look at what's being coming out of your own internal human resources, because this, that's where it's coming from. It's not coming from outside. It's coming from inside the house. Somebody, in, in, and by the way, they're, Lockheed's using a company that was founded by two white guys. Yeah. That's who's doing the training at Lockheed. It's somebody internally who's telling them, in order to hire people, you need to do this level of training. It's worse when you're talking about consumer products brands who have gone so far left. Eventually, it's going to bite them in the ass because they're going to alienate more than half of their customer yeah. base. So true. Yeah. Can I say one thing to your sure. point that's so brilliant? It's that they've tricked the people who used to listen to Rage Against the Machine right. to <laughs> joining the machine. Yes, and that's my point. Like, yes. I'm, I'm the resistance. I'm like, you literally went from listening to Rage Against the Machine to you're in the machine. <laughs> you're yeah. making so bombs stupid. for the government. Yeah. It's <laughs> such a great racket. I, oh, I admire it now. Now I think yeah. I'm going to be pro-woke. What do you mean? <laughs> All right, we got to move on. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.